Hey guys, so I am here today to talk about a very special book. It's been on my TBR for a really long time and I'm so excited to talk about it today. Ooh. Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. Ugh. If you've never heard of this book before, you probably have not heard of Diversity Bingo. Diversity Bingo is a very important thing this year. Um, it was created by some really awesome people on the internet. The main one that I know is Haley from These Book Lions. Go follow her. But the idea behind Diversity Bingo is throughout the year of 2017, you're trying to read as many diverse books as possible within this like bingo square. Um, and so each little square has a different kind of diverse book to read. So there's like, you know, books about indigenous, people and trans main characters and people of color and all that really cool stuff and one of the little slots on there has um, I can't remember the exact wording but it has something to do with like an ace main character and everybody in their right mind is reading this book basically because the ace rep is very limited in the book community at this point and so many people are like I know this has ace rep let's all read this one so literally every diversity bingo thing I've seen everybody's like every heart a doorway and I'm like yeah I can't believe it took me this long to read it actually because it does have an ace main character and I am is. That being said, this has been on my TBR for a long time, so I was super excited when I got it for Christmas so I could finally read it. Naturally, I had to make it one of the first books that I read this year, so I'm here to talk to you about it today, and if you don't know what it's about, other than, you know, Ace Rhett, because I know a lot of people just kind of pick it up being like, I don't know, asexuality, let's go. This book is based on the idea that children have this thing where they will uh, walk through doorways and end up going to different worlds. It's very similar to Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, like it has that kind of vibe to it. They are very separate works and they're very different, but when I was reading it the whole time I was like, this is like Miss Peregrine, but if a girl had written it! And it was really different, yeah. So it's kind of magical realism in a lot of ways. It's It reminds me a lot of Alice in Wonderland. I loved it, like this book was so good and I'm really mad that it's only 200 pages, but I'm also also trying to learn how to love short books. That's a story for another day. Our story follows a lot of different characters. It's told in multiple POVs but it's not like specific. You kind of shift back and forth throughout the chapters to different people at different times so it does take a little bit of getting used to that way but I personally highly recommend it especially for the ace rep but another thing that I didn't really know going into it is that there's a trans character which is really cool. There's also a Japanese character. There's a Latino character. I'm trying to think. There's a pretty good range of diversity in this book which was, I mean I was kind of surprised about because nobody talks about it like that but I would definitely recommend it either if you're doing it for diversity bingo or just you need an ace rep or you know a good book pick it up it's really good especially if you like Miss Peregrine's Hope for Peculiar Children it's perfect for you let me talk about the ace rep because that is like the main reason I read this book and since I am asexual myself I feel like I will talk to you about it because that's important. I think the ace rep in this book was really, really well done even though it's only brought up a couple of times because when it is brought up, it's very specific. Like there's a line that she's like, yeah, I'm actually asexual and you're like, thank you. So that was really good. I really liked that. I also really liked how uh, she kind of explained it. She explained the difference between asexual and aromantic and how those are two separate things in the world of asexuality. Um, so I really really appreciated that. I kind of related to the main character because she was asexual and I was like yeah I totally feel what you're saying but we are also different levels on the ace spectrum so if you are ace and you're going into it thinking this is gonna be me well represented like it's it might be but also don't be surprised if it's like slightly different than you. Um, I think the main character is a little bit more comfortable with physical touch than I am and she's more interested in kissing people than I think I am so that was kind of interesting to get to see. But more than that like I just really liked how asexuality is brought up in this book and it's very nonchalant like the main character is very similar to me in the sense that you don't really know how people are gonna react when you bring it up. You kind of just say it and you're like well I hope they like me, I don't really know, this could have just ruined everything and it, it totally works out fine but I did really like how like real that was. Let's talk more specifically so if you haven't read it, go read it, come back, my grade is five stars because I'm the worst, okay bye. I loved this book. Uh, I started it last night and I finished it you know within the day and it was just everything. Like this is literally, if I could write a book, I would write this book but I can't because she already wrote it. Do you see my dilemma here? I really really loved this book because it has such a unique world but it, somehow she manages to write it all in under 200 pages and I, I'm just like baffled that you could 
first of all that you can do that but like she does it so so well and I was so happy with all of the characters and I even though the plot I think was the part that lacked the most like it's a 200 page book you can't have a serious plot I still really loved the plot and I thought it was really really interesting like I I've read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and when I read it I was like yeah this is cool but like I felt like it could have been done better and and this is it if it could have been done better it's this and I do think like this could still be made better I think it could have been longer and I would have liked it to be a little bit longer um, I think there is still room to improve on uh, a little bit of the diversity I was a little bit concerned that the first character that died was the Japanese girl um, so that's a little bit odd but Overall, like, I just really loved this world. It was so cool, and I loved the way she went about describing it, because my thing with magical realism is that you can do literally anything and have it make sense in this world, but, like, as a reader, you're like, I don't understand. This makes no sense. Logically, this can't happen. I don't get it, but, like, it makes sense somehow, and so I'm really impressed with that, I think. But, like, more than anything, I just really liked the characters. I think the world was unique, and... It was different than most of the things that I've seen. I do, I would really like them to explore Nancy's world because I am all about that. I really like that. But more than anything, I just really like the characters in this world. They're all like super weird and quirky, but really cool. Like Nancy, Nancy is so great. Like I'm not Nancy. Like I could not pull off Nancy's aesthetic or her life or anything, but I related to her because she was an asexual character. And I really appreciated that they made such a cool girl asexual. It was just so cool. I really liked that. Um, and I also really, really, really loved Kate. Kate was so great. And I think this is actually, this may be the first book that I've ever read with a trans character in it. So that's kind of a big deal, I think. I just really liked how they did it because they did touch on a number of different times how Kate is like, yeah, people don't accept me, but like this is who I am. And it was really interesting to read about it. I really liked Kate's character. I also liked how he and Nancy interacted because it, it kind of did play out the way that I would have expected it to if I were in Nancy's shoes. Um, like to be asexual and to be interested in a guy, but like only aesthetically, like you, I love the scene where Sumi is like, so do you want to fuck him? And she's like, what? No, what? Why would you say that? Like that's literally basically me. But I love their relationship and I would like to think, because I'm pretty sure we're going to get another book on them in the far off future, like 2018. I'm very interested to see how that relationship blossoms and I hope that it does and I hope we get to see something come out of that because we just lack so many asexual relationships. Even if we get asexual characters, we don't really get asexual relationships, if you know what I mean. I really, really loved Sumi. It's really weird because like literally she mimics one of my characters that I created, not in personality or anything, but like it's it just reminds me so much of my own work in progress. It was very strange to read, but I loved her character and I just am really sad that she died. I was hoping by the end that it would come away and she'd be like, hey, by the way, I'm still alive. I'm just in a different doorway. I'm in a different world, but it didn't happen and I was really mad about that. So whatever, it's fine. But I really liked her and I liked her relationship with Nancy. Like they were just such cute roommates for like the 10 pages they were together, however many it was. So I'm like super happy with that. And I did like that she was Japanese. Like I thought that was a really great like added diversity, even though she did die first. The other characters we have in this book are Jack and Jill, who are both girls, and I loved that. But I really loved the Ghostbusters vibes that was actually coming off of Jack, because Jack totally reminds me of Holtzman. If you've seen the female Ghostbusters, you will know Jillian Holtzman is basically the same as Jack in this book, and I was just like so happy with that. But I loved how all of them were just so quirky and unique, and it was just like a fun love and gang of weird kids who have their problems but are still cool. The plot was very interesting because I felt like it was kind of abrupt, and it was weird because it doesn't feel like a 200 page book. It feels like it should be longer, but it's not. And so we really only have this one main thing where, you know, a couple people die and then we figure out that Jill did it and then Jack and Jill leave through the doorway and that's basically it. And then we end the book with Nancy going through her own doorway. I liked Jack and Jill and I, I appreciated their storyline, but I'm not <laughs> very interested to read about them. Um, according to Goodreads, that's what the sequel is about. It's like a prequel. Basically, the second book in the series follows Jack and Jill when they're in their world before they come back. And I just, I don't know, I'm not very interested to hear about that. I would rather hear more about Nancy and her life and her world, but I am kind of interested to hear how it came about that Jack just kind of like knew how to make the doorway and she was like, okay, bye guys, I gotta go. And you're like, 
what? So I really did like the pot. It was really creepy and I loved, I don't know, I loved the mystery aspect. It was very like thriller, horror-esque and it was so cool. And I also really liked the writing style of this book. There were a lot of things that I just like underlined because it was really thoughtful or the descriptions. I really actually enjoyed the descriptions in this book and I usually hate descriptions. So I was really thankful for that. Like especially the description of Nancy when she first steps on the page, you're like, white hair with streaks of black and black boots and black and a white tunic like I was just sold already. I just really really love this book and I love this world and I I feel like I should reread it at some point later on this year maybe before the second book comes out. I loved it and it was so good and I felt really validated. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you've read this or if you are asexual. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you again later. Goodbye.